Good evening and welcome to the News Roundup for Tuesday, May 30. Before we get into the news, please remember to like this video, share your views in the comments, and share the video with your family and friends. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Now for the news in detail. The St. James police are closely monitoring the detention of dancehall artist Andre Whitaker, also known as Squash in the United States. The police are concerned about potential security implications, particularly for the troubled Western Division, which is currently under a state of public emergency. Squash was arrested in Florida about two weeks ago on immigration-related offenses for overstaying a work petition. He had been granted permission to perform in the U.S. in 2019, but had not returned to Jamaica since. Superintendent of Police Eron Samuels stated that they are aware of Squash's situation and are monitoring it. The artist has a history of detention, having been previously held under a state of emergency in St. James in 2018. He was later released and left the country to perform in the U.S. Squash has also been linked to a double murder case in Florida, believed to be part of an ongoing gang conflict originating in St. James. Residents, particularly in Salt Spring, where Squash is from, are paying close attention to the situation and are concerned about the potential consequences if he is deported. Despite a decline in murders in the St. James Police Division this year, the community remains wary due to history of violence and the displacement associated with the gang conflict. Reverend Orville Moore, the Acting Deputy Commissioner at the Department of Correctional Services, DCS, has been reported missing. Moore, who is responsible for rehabilitation and probation aftercare services, was last seen leaving a relative's home in St. Andrew on Monday morning. He was driving a silver Fortuner with the license plate 1626JN. Despite efforts to locate him, Moore has not been found. The police and DCS have shared his photograph on social media platforms and are urging anyone with information to contact them. The Meteorological Service of Jamaica has announced that a trough is causing unstable weather across the Western Caribbean, including Jamaica and is expected to persist throughout the week. This will result in increased cloudiness, showers and thunderstorms across the island. The conditions are forecasted to continue until at least Friday. The rainfall will bring relief from the ongoing hot and dry conditions across the island. Dancehall artist Mungo Honorable, whose real name is Damian Roden, is set to stand a trial on February 17, 2025, for the murder of Cleveland Smith, which took place in 2017. Munga's co-defendant, Sheridan Gordon, is also facing the same charges. The murder trial was originally scheduled for Monday, but was postponed due to personal challenges faced by Munga's lawyer. Both Munga and Gordon have had their bail extended, and a trial readiness hearing is now scheduled for November 4, 2024. The incident in question occurred at a dance in St. Andrew, where Smith, the nephew of dancehall artist Mr. Vegas, was confronted by a group of men. An altercation took place, resulting in Smith being shot and later pronounced dead at hospital. Prior to the incident, Smith had previously injured Munga in a machete attack. Jeanan Panton, a former employee of Stocks and Securities Limited SSL, who confessed to defrauding clients, is now claiming that her former boss and SSL's founder, Hugh Crosskery, persuaded her to make the confession. Panton made this assertion in her defense against a lawsuit filed by an investor. In her defense, Panton states that the confession was made in response to an inducement offered by Crosskery on behalf of SSL. The details of the offer were not disclosed. She challenges the validity of the alleged confession and calls for strict proof of the allegations. Crosskery's attorney has stated that Panton's allegations does not align with his instructions. In her signed confession, Panton named 39 clients with accounts totaling almost $3 billion, from which she admitted to taking approximately 20%, in addition to an extra $109 million. 
Notably, the account of sports legend Usain Bolt's holding company, Welgen Limited, was not included in the confession. Meanwhile, Usain Bolt's company, Welgen, is seeking a court order against Gene and Panton to disclose any asset movements at two Jamaican banks. Welgen's lawyers are requesting the order to strengthen a freezing order obtained against Panton's assets in February. The freezing order restricts a Panton's asset up to a value of over $6 million. Bowles account with SSL had experienced a significant decline in value, prompting the alert from Panton. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang has issued an apology to the University of Technology UTEC for his comments linking students at the institution to scamming. The comments received the backlash with the president of the UTEC Students Union describing them as damaging and unfair. In a statement, Dr. Chang expressed regret for any misrepresentation of his statement and clarified that he was highlighting the broader issue of scamming involving individuals from all levels of society, including university students. He acknowledged the concern of an increasing scamming among young people and emphasized the government's commitment to implementing social intervention programs to deter criminal activities. The Union of Clerical, Administrative and Supervisory Employees, UKS, is urging swift action in finalizing the job reclassification exercise at the National Housing Trust, NHT, to address the concerns of NHT employees. The exercise, which has been ongoing for about five years, has caused unrest among workers. Unions are awaiting a final approval from the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service for the implementation process, but there has been a delay in receiving a response. The lack of progress has led to workers staging a sick-out, causing disruptions in NHD operations on Monday. A 63-year-old British retiree was apprehended at the Norman Manley International Airport for attempting to smuggle 2.5 kilograms of cocaine. The woman who was en route to the UK, was caught during a security screening when the drugs were discovered concealed in her luggage. The seized cocaine has an estimated street value of £75,000. The retiree was arrested on a suspicion of violating the Dangerous Drugs Act. Detectives from the Manchester Police revisited the location of an alleged domestic dispute in Somerset, where a police constable was killed and his wife injured. During the investigation, officers discovered documents for a licensed pistol, believed to be the weapon used to shoot 41-year-old constable Damian Blair. The constable had suffered head injuries as well. His wife, who had a hand wound, is currently hospitalized, and investigators suspect it may have been self-inflicted. The incident occurred about 6 p.m. on Monday during a dispute at their home. Neighbors reported hearing loud noises. Upon arrival, the police found Blair lying in his underpants with gunshot wounds and a head injury. Residents and relatives stated that the couple had been involved in disputes throughout their 13-year relationship, which included about eight years of marriage. Counseling was reportedly sought as they contemplated divorce, but the situation changed when the wife fell ill and Blair decided to take care of her. Blair had been a member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force for more than 20 years, according to relatives. A man identified as Dwayne Clark was allegedly shot and killed by a police officer at a bar in Betteltown, Westmoreland. The incident occurred on Monday afternoon after Clark reportedly attacked and stabbed the officer's colleague. Clark, who is said to be of unsound mind, was involved in a dispute with another man inside the bar when the police were called. As one officer was reprimanding Clark, he allegedly attacked the officer with a stool, causing him to fall to the ground. Clark then reportedly stabbed the officer in the face and chest with a knife. In response, the officer's colleague fatally shot Clark. The Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, is currently investigating the incident. In business, the Bank of Jamaica is considering the use of artificial intelligence to enhance fraud detection and prevention measures. BOJ Deputy Governor Dr. Jide Lewis stated that AI technology has the capacity to analyze large amounts of data, identify abnormal patterns, and quickly take action to prevent fraudulent transactions. 
The central bank encourages financial institutions to adapt AI technology where feasible and may provide guidelines for its implementation. Dr. Lewis emphasized that AI is becoming an integral part of business processes and there is a need to embrace its potential in enhancing fraud detection and mitigation efforts. In the region, South American leaders are gathering in Brasilia, Brazil, as President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva seeks to revitalize regional integration efforts. Lula aims to test the willingness of current governments to cooperate through a revived Union of South American Nations. The meeting will focus on discussing cooperation in energy and crime fighting, and Lula may float the idea of a regional currency as an alternative to the US dollar. The organization, initially formed 15 years ago, fractured due to political shifts, with several countries withdrawing. The challenge now is to create a bloc that can withstand the political swings and instability in the region. The meeting aims to build cohesion and exchange ideas. On the international scene, on Memorial Day evening, gunfire erupted along a boardwalk in Hollywood, Florida, resulting in nine people being injured. The victims, including six adults and three children, were taken to a children's hospital and are in stable condition. The ages of the victims have not been released yet. The incident occurred as a result of an altercation between two groups and authorities have detained one person while another suspect is still being sought. And in sports, reggae girls striker Khadija Bonishaw has extended her contract with Manchester City for two more years. Shaw, who joined the city in 2021 from Bordeaux in France, will now stay with the team until the summer of 2026. She had an outstanding performance in the 2022-2023 season, scoring 31 goals in 30 appearances and earning several individual awards, including City's Player and Goal of the Season awards, League PFA Player of the Month honors, and CONCACAF Women's Player of the Year. Since joining Manchester City, she has scored a total of 50 goals, solidifying her reputation as one of Europe's most prolific forwards. Shaw also played a crucial role in helping Jamaica's national team qualify for the FIFA Women's World Cup and secured a third place finish in the CONCACAF Women's Championship. And that is it for your news roundup for today. We would appreciate you liking this video leaving a comment and sharing the video with your family and friends. Have a good evening and see you next time. Teach them! Hey yo, hello! Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Like the video before you go. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. And remember to share the video with your friends and family and browse the channel for more quality content. Until next time. Walk good, my friends. Teach them!